so many times client asks me to submit a marketing plan or they ask people kit can you help me create a marketing plan in most cases i say no uh, or rather say that i can create a marketing plan for you but i need i need to charge you for uh, to create a marketing plan because to create a marketing plan it is going to take me a couple of weeks and i cannot spend time on this without getting paid for this so if you can pay me a couple of thousand dollars i can create a marketing plan for you so it's it really happens that uh, a client hires me for uh, uh, to create the marketing plan because in most cases bigger clients who end up hiring me who have good marketing budgets they do have a marketing plan they need people for execution um or even if they need someone who can create a marketing plan they usually hire someone who can help them validate the marketing plan but i see a lot of value in knowing how to create a marketing plan for clients because clients do ask you to create marketing plan and even to uh pitch people services you need to be able to see bigger picture so i've created this uh, small video of 30 odd minutes in which i will show you how i go about creating marketing plan for a client especially during the sales process and how i uh then translate that marketing plan into fixed set of services that i provide to my clients so i hope you like this video and it helps you work with bigger clients and uh, look at the bigger picture not just your part that uh, you are working with the client as an, as an seo or social media expert how can you work with a client at a more strategic level is what you learn in this video so if you want to learn all this just continue watching and uh, before I wrap up i i also want to say that um, i'm accepting applications for the new batch so if you want to learn digital marketing sales and start uh, your own agency and work with some awesome clients around the world uh you should apply for the next batch okay the rest just continue watching the video to learn how to create marketing plan i'll see you around hey guys welcome to this yet another session at agency school and the topic of this video is how to create a marketing strategy for your clients and present yourself like a real consultant to your marketing clients in this video i want to basically uh teach you how to present yourself as a consultant to your clients and submit a, a marketing strategy but i would like to start by saying that a client would really hire you to create a marketing strategy in most cases they would hire you to take care of specific channels aspects of your marketing so it really happens that a client hires me for a uh, marketing uh, to create a marketing plan then why this training video if, if the client won't hire you for uh, to create the marketing plan then what's the point of doing this video the objective of this of this video is to give you confidence as a marketer of knowing the big picture when the client when talking to a client this will especially help you in talking to the client more intelligently or rather strategically like a consultant during the sales stage of a marketing project because somebody who's starting out new doesn't understand how uh his work fits into the entire marketing picture and uh, if you've seen this picture uh uh this this uh uh my mom gives this ko uh, hindi muhavra around this and she she Yes, she talks about this a lot of times. That uh, sometimes you have to step back to to see that it's an elephant. It's not a spear. It's not a fan. It's not a wall. It's not a rope. It's not a tree. It's, it's not a snake. It's an elephant. So to see the marketing from uh, from a more complete angle is is what I want you to enable with this. Because otherwise, what happens is that if you if you see most freelancers who are charging. Uh, very low for their services these people do not understand how their efforts fit into the the bigger picture of the marketing plan how can they be the marketing manager of the the campaign if if they understand the bigger picture and that's what i want you to help with how to think like a marketing manager how to talk like a marketing manager who understands how uh, all these marketing pieces of seo instagram marketing website they all come together 
moreover i've realized while take while talking to many of uh, you guys that if that it doesn't come naturally especially to the ones who are starting out new the struggle to see the big picture and, and understand how everything connects and thus they struggle to present themselves as a consultant who can work with them at a strategic level by them i mean who can work with the client at a strategic level the client also don't get a confidence they see uh, otherwise if you don't understand how the bigger picture looks like of uh, the client uh, even though doesn't want to hire you to create the marketing plan but still he wants someone who can can say that whether this makes sense to the overall marketing objective or not and until don't you don't have that understanding um uh, you won't be able to give uh recommendations more sensible recommendations more accurate recommendations to your clients you'll often give suggestions that are not practical to the overall marketing picture so that's the core objective of this short video i want you to start talking to your clients like a consultant like a marketing manager who understands the entire the bigger marketing process hence i created this training video so before we i get into the the nitty gritties i want to say that i'm not claiming that this is uh, the best or the only approach in the world to uh, think about the marketing plan uh this is my approach and it works well for me feel free to tweak it improvise it and uh, use it the way you want it's just how i how i see marketing when i'm talking to my clients so this approach is very personal i might be missing few pieces that you might can add and you can of course let me know if you if there's anything you can suggest to improve this but uh, it can be a great starting point for most of you and irrespective of whether you're doing this for yourself or you're doing this for your for a client across any industry it should work in any industry so here's my four step process that i use to create a marketing plan at least for myself if not for the client because like i said the client um uh, if the client ever asks me pulkit can you submit uh, a marketing plan for me let me step back and, and tell you talk about this if a client ever says that pulkit can you submit a marketing plan i say no because i i make them understand that marketing plan is not a two page document a marketing plan is a 30 40 page document which i'm going to take at least two weeks to prepare and it will cost you anything around Two thousand dollars. If if you want me to create a marketing plan, that makes sense for because for that I need to understand your business. I cannot just make a marketing plan out of thin air. I'll have to spend time with you. You'll have to spend time with me. I need a commitment from your side, and uh, after that uh, you can expect a marketing plan. But if you want ideas, I can give you a few ideas, but I cannot give you a marketing plan because it does take time. So in most cases, uh, in most companies, ha- know what their marketing plan is. It's created by the CMOs because the companies who have bigger budgets, they have an in-house team, they have a chief marketing officer, or they have a have their f- the the company founder who already has a basic marketing plan in place. They need someone who can help and validate their marketing plan, who can give their feedback on whether this marketing plan is right or not. who can tweak it but rarely do they ask any agency to create a marketing plan it usually comes from either the in-house team or the company founder uh the cm or the cmo he comes up with a marketing plan so that's why i'm saying that it will really happen that a company asks you for a marketing plan and the companies who do ask you for a marketing plan you can you'll you'll see uh um uh, if you try to submit marketing plans that eight out of in such companies they are unprofessional they don't know what they are doing they are lost and uh, they'll take the information from you and they'll disappear most of them who ask for marketing plan so any time a client asks you for marketing plan tell them that it's a paid service and i'm going to charge you for this and uh, after looking at this training if a client says yes because i have created few marketing plans for certain companies local as well as international uh but uh, they 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 were very few i i don't think i have created marketing more than four or five marketing plans in my entire career thus far in these 10 years who who the clients who were ready to pay me to create the marketing plans because in most cases it's, it's not even about whether they want to pay for it whether they have the budget or not it's just that it doesn't make sense to them that 
to have an agency a third party agency create their marketing plan because they understand the business and uh, they have a marketing plan in most cases uh they just need someone who can validate and improve the marketing plan they'll just run by their marketing plan from you and they'll seek your suggestions uh but again we still need to understand the marketing plan how to create a marketing plan so that you can see the bigger picture and uh, talk to a client like a consultant and uh, deliver more value in your communication especially during the sales process so here's my four step process that i use to to go about creating a marketing plan for my client and the most of this happens during the sales process when a client contacts me when the client says that he wants a plan so i don't submit a formal document but once i know that they have the budget and uh, either i'm doing their development i have some sort of surety from the client in that case this is the process i take uh to create the marketing plan which is usually in the form of the statement of work because only after i know i understand their business uh i i have some sort of plan in my in back of my mind that after i have the client in i understand their business uh this is what their customers want and this is these are the channels that are important for them this is what they have tried and now this is what i want to give them uh and this is going to help them so how do, does this entire process work is what i'm going to tell you uh in this video so here's my four step process i started i start with the uh, gathering business intelligence uh the this is the first stage at which i spend time with the client ask them a lot of questions most of which i've already covered in the sales training but i'll i'll uh i'll give you more questions the more things that you can ask a client to get a better understanding about the the client's business so it starts with business uh, intelligence gathering second is identify marketing channels third is identify gaps and challenges and uh, fourth is define the scope to fill that gap that you identified in the third step so let's start with the first step which is gather business intelligence so and this phase is typically when you're talking to a client in a meeting or in a skype in the, in the sales process uh like i say i i tell you guys that to spend most of your time of your sales call asking client good questions so this is uh precisely what we do and uh, if we try to break down the the what areas of the business you have to understand you have to understand the, the client's business model you have to understand the client uh the market in which they are operating they need, you need to understand their target audience and you need to understand their marketing objectives these four things you have to ask them and uh, let me explain each one of them one by one so to understand by by understanding the business model i mean uh you have to ask questions such as how is the business making money uh what is your current sales process like so when they come to your website uh where do they come where do they come from do they come from etsy do they come from instagram do they come from facebook do they come from seo okay after, let's say if, if they come from seo google if they find you from there where do they go so they go on your pricing page or maybe they go on their product page from there they might just leave and uh, they might again see their retargeting ad or they see their email they see an offer they come back and they make the purchase so you have to understand the customers who are buying right now because they do have a business they have to have buying customer in most cases the clients who will have the budget they have running business so they do have few orders they they already have people um uh, filling up business inquiries so you have to ask the client that how are these people contacting you right now uh so how is this this funnel working off for you uh explain this the explaining step to me is what you have to ask the client secondly you have to ask the client differentiation this is very very important even though it sounds almost like a cliche when you ask the client what makes your 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 business different but understand the implication of this in all the areas of their business in their marketing in their website design development in their social media it's very very important that you address this and i this is so important for us that if a client has an undifferentiated uh, services for example if a multi fashion multi multi brand fashion store contacts us if we see no way they are different from their competitors if they are not able to offer any unique value to their customers we know for a fact that we are going to have a hard time 
uh, giving this client results. So it's very important that you ask the client that what makes you different from your uh, competitors and more importantly what makes you different in a way that it's worth talking about um, being different is not enough you have to tell your client you have to be different in a way that your customers talk about you and like i said it's so important for us that we even reject clients who have uh, undifferentiated products and services because we know uh, if uh, we we cannot differentiate their products if they're fundamentally their products their designs they if they don't have anything unique about them uh, we our marketing campaigns will suffer uh, we'll not be able to give them results because people uh, their customers when they look at their ads uh, they would uh, wouldn't see any value in engaging with those ads so it's very important that uh, the client's business is differentiated and um, most businesses who have seen a couple of years of uh, their their uh, the initial two years of their business into their business, they have some sort of differentiation. So you have to ask your client that what makes you different and uh, is it remarkably different? Uh, do people talk about it and uh, why do they buy from you and not your competitor? So differentiation is something you have to understand to understand the business model. Thirdly, you have to understand their top selling products and categories, what which products and categories make them most money. You have to ask them about their profit margins, um, roughly how much profit margins they make because it's important that you know this number uh, because you would know then how much money can you spend to 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 sell uh, their products uh, because of course you if they are making let's say fifty dollars on uh, by selling a single product you cannot spend sixty dollar you cannot pay Facebook sixty or seventy dollars to. Uh, sell that product that will be lost for them. So for that reason you need to understand their profit margins Because uh, if you ask the client profit margin, they might ask you why do you need this number? So you have to make them understand that this is why we need you to know your profit margins and then the lifetime customer value uh, By which I mean if you spend uh, An X amount, let's say if we spend $50 to acquire a customer who places an order on which we make uh, we only make let's say thirty dollars of profit it is it might be a twenty dollar loss for now but the same customer can come back and purchase uh, more products for example I was talking to a client yesterday and uh, she sells bridesmaid dresses and hair accessories the problem with her is, was that uh, she couldn't spend a lot even though her margins were good but the lifetime customer value wasn't good because a, a, a customer they acquire would only buy from the store once because most people only get married once. So that for that reason, the lifetime customer value was low. So I was talking to her about uh, how we can could maximize the lifetime customer value so that we can spend more money to acquire customer, the same customer later on. Otherwise, uh, uh, the the low the low the lower the customer lifetime value is the lower you can spend to acquire that customer but if you can have the if you can make the same customer uh, purchase 10 times in the next let's say a uh, couple of years or three four years you can obviously spend more to acquire that customer because the, over the period of lifetime the customer is giving you a lot of ROI so you have to understand the business model these are the questions you can ask them secondly you have to understand the market in which they are, the client is operating uh, you have to ask them questions such as who are your competitors? How much traffic uh, do you have on your website? How much say how many sales do you have on your store every week? Uh, which marketing channels have you tried thus far? What has worked for you? What hasn't worked for you? Uh, which channels have you not tried? Uh, can we look at your Google Analytics account and uh, can we look at your uh, your ads that you're running and they would often give us access to their business manager of course for which they ask us to sign up an NDA which we happily do that but to give a client uh, a plan or recommend which by plan I mean invariably I mean that services that do make sense that are plan uh, instead of uh, just because I'm, I'm not, I know that I'm not pushing these services just because I want to sell these services I know that uh, if they take these services they will get results so I, they often ask me to sign up an NDA non-disclosure agreement which binds me to not share that information with anyone. I sign up that NDA and uh, uh, they then share all this information with me. And uh, third, they, uh, 
the the third area that we need to understand is their target audience i ask the client about their target audience and they might give you a, a different audience for b2b and and b2c uh, depending on their business model and uh, so as part of this i ask them questions about why do you, your customers are buying from you are they buying because of your web, your designs you have they like product designs is, is it because you of your perceived value because your photography is excellent or is it because of the price because uh, your the, the the price point that you're selling is is very attractive to them is it because of results is it because of reviews why exactly are customers buying from you and uh, you ask this to your um, to your clients and how do they spend their day that is your target audience your customers how are they spending their day what are their interests um, and uh, where do they hang out what blog do they do they read and we have already covered this in week 1 when i um uh, talk about how you can understand your target audience your clientele i make you go through all this this exercise and understand what, how do your clients spend their day so so the same exercise of creating the personas you can do for your client and understand that how do they typically spend their day at the fourth level of understanding about uh the client that you need to understand to create a plan a uh, meaningful plan is that you need to understand the client's marketing objectives uh which means you have to ask them that how many customers are they getting um uh so I typically ask them questions about their weekly and monthly sales that how many sales are you getting on your store uh, right now in the current month in the last 30 days how many sales did you get and then I ask them about their target growth that in the coming months and the coming year uh do they want to increase their traffic how soon so i ask them that what is your objective do you want to increase uh do you want more traffic more sales or more engagement and uh, by when do you want that so it's very important that you ask this question to the client uh and uh, so that the client knows that you are uh, are really concerned about their growth and it also gives you a foundation to to recommend them the right channels that whether what you're about to recommend them is aligned to their objective because they uh there are cases when my clients hire me not for sales but for engagement it especially happens in case of instagram when a client hires me on instagram marketing they do not expect sales they do not expect traffic they just uh expect uh more engagement they want more engagement and they want their instagram account to grow and uh, they want us to be able to position them better with uh instagram so it's very important that you ask them about their objective and uh, most importantly you have to ask them about their marketing budgets you have to ask them okay you are saying that you're making 10000 dollars you want to go to 20000 dollars do you have sufficient budget so then the client would tell you whether or not they have the budget so it helps uh you keep the client grounded and uh, not avoid I mean prevent them from stop them from having any unrealistic expectations they they should know that uh, uh based on the budgets they have this is how much they can you can really do for them so i've already covered this in sales so i'm not going to spend more time on this but after you gather all this information you will be in a stage that you would have all the information needed to needed to recommend them something to help them achieve their marketing objectives uh you will understand their business and now uh you know where they want to go now you can start giving them recommendations so now we come to the step 2 the step 2 is identifying the marketing channels based on your knowledge uh and understanding of their business products and services their target audience budget and uh uh their knowledge your knowledge of marketing options they have so you can suggest them marketing channels in which uh which in which they can invest uh so now that you know that they this is uh who the target audience is this is their bu- what the budget is uh these are the relevant channels and they, it, you might recommend them google adwords influencer marketing paid ads email marketing instagram marketing marketplaces and there can be a number of options you can give them affiliate marketing there are so many options you can give them 
in most cases client know about their target channels but there are times when you can uh, tell a client that you should be investing your time and money in other channels so you so what i'm saying is that in most cases uh, the client would already know that these are my channels but uh, you can only add value at this step by recommending them uh, a new either a new channel or maybe helping them uh, telling them that maybe you're spending too much time on facebook whereas you should be spending time on instagram so you can course correct them but in most cases they would know where to put their money in step number three you can identify gaps and issues so you know uh, you understand their business you understand their business objectives now you have to tell them that these are this is the gap so you are here you want to go here and this is the gap we need to bridge we need to fill and these are the channels challenges that we need to overcome so you have to put them them down in an email so that you tell let the client know that these are the things we need to do so you will have to identify the gaps and challenges in their way things that might stop them from reaching their goal so what you'll do then is you analyze their online touch points such as their brand identity uh their logo colors typography packaging photography style because i'm in fashion and uh, it is very very important that i give them feedback on their brand and uh, uh i would i think in most comp- in, in most cases it is important that you give a client feedback on their brand identity and on their brand communication uh people are touch very touchy about their logo don't say your logo is bad never say uh, this to a client uh but give their your feedback about anything other things that are above and beyond their logo clients really would change their logo because you don't like it uh but they might change the color patterns and uh, the typography the packaging and photography these things they they would be more open about uh this girl they will be more open for discussion uh check their website on mobile and desktop and uh, check their mobile application check their photography check their social media feed content email backlinks whatever you can suggest them that these are the things that are not right uh and i i do it all the time when clients contact me i tell them that uh i had a look at your website and these are some of the bugs and issues i found on the website it doesn't open on uh well on on my mobile or uh maybe you're not communicating your brand on your home page about page it looks like uh hundreds of other fashion stores out there i don't get the idea why what's unique about your business so there's something wrong with your brand communication or maybe your facebook login is is not working or i might tell them uh you don't have a, a, a currency selector or you are not you're trying to sell uh you are you are a business that's based in dubai and uh, if you want to uh penetrate uh deeper you should start offering arabic as a language so you need to make your store multilingual so i might give them all sorts of feedback on their website that i think can help them grow their business and in many cases the client uh i'm able to convert a marketing client into a development client before uh, they engage me for marketing so this is uh, what you have to do you have to identify the gaps and let the client know even if the client doesn't ask for it make sure that you give your feedback uh, your genuine feedback uh on their website and all their online touch points uh see if they're working with influencer what are the opportunities out there that they can use and find the problems make a list and share it with the client uh take a call, take a call on which problems you can fix and which uh you will let the client take care of because there will be a lot of things that you don't have control over uh maybe the client is not open to let you do their development but uh, you just want to let them know that if uh i run facebook paid ads on your product page uh, the way it is now uh because the product page uh add to cart button is too far down below on on, mo- on a mobile uh you will not not get conversions in that case you'll just give the feedback and let the client fix the product page you there's nothing can do about it because client as an house developer so you have to decide what is that you have to do and what is the client has to do you have to be very uh vocal about it you have to let the client know who takes care of what and after that i send my, 
I send my feedback in the form of email screenshots and PDFs. So I might send all this information in the form of feed of screenshots as a PDF or an email. And like I said, this analysis often converts into a web development project. So client comes to me for marketing and becomes a development client. And after that, we start discussing pre-launch marketing and post-launch marketing uh, is how it works. And step number four is defining marketing scope to bridge the gap. So now that you know that uh, uh, what you, you understand the business and uh, you know their target audience, you know the marketing objectives, you know the challenges, you have addressed them. Now uh, you create a scope to bridge that gap that what can I do? What can we do to help you re, uh, achieve your objective of more sales, more engagement or whatever. So at step number four, you define the marketing scope based on the identify ma identified marketing channels. Uh, you define each of the channel, uh, which we call the statement of work. Uh, you define and quantify the scope of marketing and submit statement of work as per the sales training, uh, uh, in the module two. So if you're pitching them Instagram marketing, you tell them that exactly how many posts you, uh, you'll create, how many stories and, uh, how much will cost them, how many influencers per month, how many blog posts per month, how much monthly spent for Facebook and Instagram, how many pages, uh, of, for keyword optimization. So you quote the client for these services and, uh, create a list of action items and put them on base camp. So this then takes shape of uh, a marketing project and uh, it from marketing plan it converts into a marketing projects uh, avoid pitching the client for more than two services channel uh, or channels especially when the client is new is very very important because because we are talking about marketing plan don't get don't get emotional and in try to pitch the client all the services because uh, I've already covered this on my one of our videos on my YouTube channel that the chances that a client especially who's new will engage you for more than two services is very very rare client want to first test the test an agency or test a consultant first by giving them one channel giving them small work and if they like it then they give you more work so there's no point you you submit a big uh, marketing plan telling them that we'll uh, we'll take care of five channels for you and, uh, and, uh, we'll charge you, let's say $10,000 per month. I have submitted a lot of such proposals and I don't think I have converted more than one or two in which a client has engaged me for four or five services. In most cases, the client engages me for two services to start with. And then if they trust me, if they like get their results, then they engage me for uh, a bigger scope. So never try to submit a marketing plan, a statement of work, which has more than two services, uh, because you will, uh, you will shock the client with a big quote and the client will, uh, not work with you. So it's better to try to limit their risk by pitching them two services, one service, ideally maximum two services. And after that you, uh, you tell them that let's start phase one with these two services and this, is how much it will cost you. And if you like uh, the results and if uh, it works out well, you can engage us for more services. So that's it. I hope this video gave you better understanding of how to talk to a client at a strategic level, like a consultant. That was my objective with this video. I have covered many aspects of this, of this training in other modules already, but because many of you guys asked me this question, Pulkit, how do we create a marketing strategy for a client how do we create a marketing plan i had to do this video so i hope this give you, gives you the confidence as a marketing consultant and you take this confidence uh, when you go to your next sales call that if required you can create a marketing plan for a client and you get the bigger picture how each of these smaller services uh, fit into the bigger marketing plan okay so i'll see you in the next video bye bye